Uh, so, um, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's David Malcolm. I work at Red Hat on GCC um, with a focus on usability, um, diagnostics, um, user experience, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to be talking about, well, optimization records, showing the user what GCC's optimizers are doing. Um, and um, so the question is, how do advanced end users get a sense of what GCC, um, the optimizers are doing? Um, questions that a user might ask is, why isn't this loop getting vectorized? Uh, did this function get in line to um, this other function? If so, why not? Or, or why? Why are these decisions being made? Um, and um, so I'm talking about, going to talk about uh, GCC 8 and prior, the solutions that existed, um, the problems I felt that those solutions had, um, the improvements I've been working on that are already now in GCC 9, um, and the improvements I, I want to make um, for GCC 9. And then there's some other ideas which are perhaps more, um, shall we say, out of the box, or out there, um, uh, left field, about how we might um, uh, change the, the user experience um, in terms of optimizations. Um, and yeah, so with optimizations, of course, um, the, the key thing to do is to measure. Don't, um, don't just guess um, what the program's doing. Um, and so figure out uh, like where the 10% the, uh, the of the code, where 90% of the time is being spent. That's the, uh, the, the kind of the, um, what's the rule, um, well, guideline. Um, but w I, I, found we, I felt we had a disconnect between um, there's the world of profiling and the world of the optimization dumps, where um, the optimization dumps talk about, well, this particular source file line column, I'm doing things to it. And the profile I kind of works at that level, but there's multiple that may, might not be quite enough detail in that um, if a function's been inlined into many many different places across uh, the, uh, the the code, um, well I, perhaps it's getting optimized by later optimization passes in different ways as different sites. Do we have enough information? And I wrote, uh, yeah, what about templates and instantiated many times? I, I thought I think about it now. I think the function name. Would actually, in the signature would probably give you that. But a similar kind of idea I had in mind. Um, but there's the idea that you, you do profiling, and then you, you kind of, then going from the profile and say, I really want to look at foo.c such and such a function. And then having to kind of do that, it'd be much nicer to sort of integrate the two. Um, and, I, and I guess the issue is, for the user, how do you get actionable information? The user doesn't just want to know what the optimizer did. I think they probably want to know, well, what can I do to my code? To, to make things go faster or make the code size smaller? Is there a, is there a construct within my loop that is problematic uh, to the vectorizer? Um, if so, can I slightly tweak things in a way that maybe um, will get my code to continue running as before, but the optimizer can actually handle it this time um, without needing to um, like wait for the, ne the next release of GCC? Or maybe there's an option that will give them better results. And I, I guess the other audience is, as GCC developers, um, how do we get a sense of how an optimization pass is running? There's the whole the debugging of, of the, the optimization pass. Um, and uh, how much overlap is there between those two use cases? Um, and um, in terms of the existing approaches, there, there are kind of two. There's the, the dump files, where you do dash f dump tree name of pass or tree all. I just tend to just do f tree all, f dump IPA or f just dump the whole lot. And then, um, examine foo.c. something, um, and the something I think is undocumented and it changes from revision, so it might be foo.c. 029t. e in line in one particular release of the compiler, but it might be something else in another release of the compiler. Um, it's sort of human readable, it's a mixture of say gimple dump or whatever the particular um, phase of the, uh, the IR is, um, and a mixture of uh, notes and sometimes free form stuff that's been f print f directly into the dump file. Um, and, um, uh, and so it's how passable it is. It's not really machine, hasn't really been machine readable up till now. Um, and also, what's important, um, unfortunately, in terms of the granularity of the, the dump, uh, it's kind of just at the level of per translation unit in that if you have one particular source file, um, all of the loops in that, uh, all, the, all the vectorization decisions across that um, that whole TU are going to be splattered down into one enormous wall of text. 
Um, and you might say, well, actually, I really care about this specific function, or more, more particularly, please just tell me what other, I, what other hot loops based on the profile data, tell me about those. Um, and, and there's another one, the dash, op, dash f opt info, which I believe was kind of added later. Um, and that has slightly different ways of tweaking it, where you passes are flagged based on uh, are they uh, with sort of attributes, are they loop passes, are they inlining passes, and, and so on. Oh, they're, they're kind of tagged. Um, into these groups, and you can say, I want to know about um, missed optimization opportunities in vectorization passes, for example. And then that will at least let you filter things a little bit. But I, I, as I understand it, I think the granularity is still per translation unit. You, you can't say, just show me the, hot, the, the hottest loops. Um, and so here's some example code. Um, this was based on a a discussion on um, free nodes pound GCC IRC channel where a user pasted into a paste bin this particular fragment of C++ um, 11 I guess code um, where it's um, iterating over a vec stood vector of stood vectors trying to sum up the, the sizes of the sort of inner stood vectors and the user was saying well I've been looking at the dumps and I can't figure out why it doesn't optimize and with my limited knowledge of the vectorizer, I started looking at the dumps and thought, yeah, I can't really figure it out either, which was kind of, as, as coming from the sort of diagnostic world, and I'm slowly, sort of slowly moving into the optimization world, it was kind of the, okay, um, it's sort of an education to try and figure this thing out. Um, and so, so, so I tried initially dash f opt info all um, at dash 03, and I said, does this vectorize? And start looking at the, the dump um, file. Uh, or, or the, the dump output, because that's the stood error. And it's telling me a lot of notes at line 7, column 24, and lots of lots of information that are basically a log of very, very detailed uh, debugging information about the state of the, the internal representation and what the optimizer thinks about it. Um, and lots of information here. And at this point, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have used um, dash f optimizer, or maybe I should have just used mist because there's still more lines of, um, and it goes on and on and on and on. And yeah, did it, well, yeah, the, the pertinent information was two slides ago. So if I, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if, if, I, if I use the proper, or if I actually use the, the pre-existing filtering to dash f opt info missed, uh, it gets it down to two pages. And it's still, from an, an end user perspective, I, I, I think this is, this is suboptimal that um, we could, um, um, you know, there, there's lots of um, very arcane stuff about the inside of the compiler going on. And the pertinent information is, is kind of there. It's not vectorized. This particular statement was not supported. So that's the construct inside the loop that it couldn't handle at the time. Um, and so we know that it, it, it turns out there's a particular tree code which at that time um, the vectorizer didn't know how to handle. And it was a trivial patch. Thank you, Richie. Um, um, that's in, in chunk. Um, but you'll notice that it's still every, every all of those notes were being emitted at yeah, line 7, column 24. It's all being emitted at the what internally is stored as vect location, the location of the loop. Um, and from the user's point of view, it's like, okay, I know that the vectorizer is complaining about a particular statement, but which one is it? Um, and also, um, this, is, this is just one toy program with one loop in it. Um, if you kind of scale this up again to a real program, how do you actually kind of filter things down and get to the, the, the actual information of interest? Um, so it, I've been looking at basically a, two aspects of improvement. One is that we have a whole load of existing dump messages. Um, and the other ways we can better present those messages, can we capture metadata better um, and, uh, and indeed do machine readable output? Um, for them. And the other uh, sort of aspect is, well, actually, can we just do better messages um, and, and send that through? Um, so here's what I've done so far for uh, GCC 9. Um, and so the big one would be a dash F save optimization record. Um, and, um, and this is uh, this is explicitly to have, let's have a machine readable output format. Um, the, um, the, the option name is, 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 is taken from Clang's um, uh, option of the same name, always LLVMs, I guess. Um, this is an optimizer thing, um, and um, it, it turns out that um, we're s we have slightly different, different information we want to store. 
um, they, they're actually emitting a YAML format. Um, given that we're emitting different things altogether, I, I considered should we try and unify, but it's, it's different data. Um, and so I actually went with JSON because it's simpler. I don't know if that's a good um, decision or not, but, um, but that's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly simpler. Um, and, and so in terms of the out, what, what is output if you do this, um, it's, uh, it's, a JSON, um, uh, it's a JSON value, specifically the top level value is an array, uh, a tuple, I guess. The idea being to be able to put the format metadata right um, reliably at the top, um, saying, so I've got a format ID, so that if we need to version the format, um, you can identify this is version one data uh, and so on. Uh, it's got some generator metadata saying which version of GCC emitted this. Um, and so that's kind of a header. There's then a list of pass metadata. Uh, the, the, when I was first playing with it, I was for every message I was emitting which, uh, details about the pass that emitted this particular dump message, and I realized, well, actually, it's going to be a lot of commonality there. So I put the pass data up front, um, and I give them an ID, which is a unique machine, a unique to the file uh, ID string, which bears a strong resemblance to the hex dump of the pointer of the optimization pass within the process for obvious reasons. Um, and um, the idea, and then finally we get a, uh, within the tuple, there's a, an array of um, objects, which are the messages, the dump messages themselves. Um, and, and so in, here, here's an example of one of those objects. There's a, um, so the initial metadata, what kind is it? Is it a note? Is it a missed optimization? Is it a successful optimization? Um, then there is profile data. Uh, and this is essentially the GCC's profile count um, value, which is a, um, a number, um, which annoyingly, because it's JSON, is uh, printed in um, floating, well, it's a floating point because it's JSON. Um, and there's, but there's also a metadata of the quality, um, meaning is this coming from actual profile data or is this something that's been guessed at? Uh, and there's, a, there's an enum um, for the different kinds of data we have. Then there is the location. This is the location in the user's source code um, file line column, um, uh, which is reasonably obvious. Um, the pass, that's the ID of the pass. Um, so if there are lots of messages from the vectorization pass, I can just describe the vectorization pass once and refer to it. Um, next is the implementation location. I got sick of grepping through, looking at GCC dumps and grepping through GCC source, trying to figure out what was, where this particular message came from. Um, and so I thought it'd be much nicer to simply um, carry that as metadata, saying, well, actually, this message is being emitted by trevec data refs.c line 4367 from this function within the vectorizer. So you will always know as metadata, and you can immediately go to GCC source code, which I think as a free software project is, is, the, is the way forward so that people can dig in that way. Um, and then the more metadata, there's the, the function name within the user source code that's being analyzed. And there's also the inlining chain. Uh, this, if for this example, it's very simple because no inlining has happened. But we can record that this is when we were optimizing this function as inlined at this call site into this function as inlined in this call site into, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we can distinguish those. Right now, if you turn on dash F save optimization record, it um, forcibly, th there's, a, there's, an, there's an optimization which um, GCC records inlining information, decisions, uh, the abstract origin information in the, the, the sort of, there's a sort of chain of blocks to, to record that. Uh, I think for, primarily for the dwarf data, uh, it's also emitted diagnostics. Um, it, 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 there's a header that if you have middle end warnings. Um, but uh, I, they basically get pruned a lot. And I've basically done it. So if you turn on dash F save optimization record, that pruning is disabled, which may well bloat the memory usage. Um, and also, there's a at least one crash or bug due to this, which I need to fix. Um, whether this is a good decision or not, um, I'm, uh, well, I'm not sure. Um, and finally, th that was a lot of metadata. Here's the actual message itself. Um, and rather than just being just plain text, um, there are, there's a kind of an idea of markup within the format. Um, so this particular dump message is for um, items within it. The first one is just a string. Um, well, this is basically saying, got vec type of statement, um, and then here's the statement itself, or here's the dump of the statement, and then the type, and a new line. And so you've got a string is the first item. You've then got 
um, another string, but it's going to be marked up saying this is actually a Gimple statement, and here's, here's the location in the user source for where that statement came from, and then here's an, another string, but it's been marked up as saying this is an expression, um, and finally the new line. And the, the good thing about having this, this rich kind of marked up data is, um, where are we? If, if, for example, we're taking this, this recorded data and turning it into, say, rendering it as HTML, we can do something like this, where that string is just a string, and we're saying a yeah, div class message, but then the, the, that thing which we knew was, was recorded as being a gimbal statement, we can mark it up as being a statement, and maybe CSS magic can render that in um, a monospace font, whereas the other thing is in a proportional space font and that kind of thing. And we can, for example, record a hyperlink so you can click on it in the view. Um, similarly, the, the expression thing could be rendered differently. Um, and, and, and of course, the whole idea of this, the machine-readable data, is it's, it's the separation between um, model versus presentation. So a different presentation of the data might be in an IDE. I love the idea of um, being able to, the ID, an idea being able to, an IDE being able to read in this, this optimization data, um, then present, for example, in the left margin of the source code, there might be for lines that the optimizer thought were important. You could click on them, uh, maybe with a little profiling data bar of how hot this thing is, and it could present the, uh, in some sort of UI for here's the optimization decisions that were made on, about this line of source code. Um, and, um, oops, I should. So I've done a, um, a, a very simple um, HTML report um, generator that takes, you basically point it at a build directory and it walks, walks the subdirectories and gathers up, looks for JSON files and any that it finds, um, it sort of gathers them all up and then generates an HTML um, report, um, static HTML. Um, and, and so this is sort of all of the optimization information with recorded, um, prioritized by execution, descending execution counts. So the highest execution count, this was a PGO build, um, and so the highest execution count from the training run was on uh, this, this particular, these particular statements, uh, and the vectorizer is giving us information about that. And then there's that. There's the inlining chain, so accumulate inline from compute sum. This is actually an example from a code given by um, a Adam Nemet, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, at the LL, a recent LLVM developer talk where he basically was looking at very much the same idea from the LLVM side of things. So I was um, um, taking his example code. So if we click on, um, where are we? The, um, the, where are we? The most significant, yeah, the hottest um, vectorized, uh, hottest optimization information. Um, and I don't have an internet connection. That particular line of code, yeah, I, this is an attempt. I'm not a very good um, web front-end developer, unfortunately, um, but it's an attempt to show the source code with the optimization information in line. So that, there again is that. This is a very hot statement in here. And yeah, it, with the messages in line, and this one, there are actually 182 messages within this um, uh, that were, were dumped by the vectorizer. So I put a little toggle in there, a uh, little bit of JavaScript. Uh, and uh, it shows the sort of nested set of optimization decisions. And here you can kind of see the, um, oh, well, the, um, what's going on? Let's see if we can, hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the way I'm, I'm rendering um, hyperlinks for the individual statements that take you back to the source code. and. You scroll down to the end and finally get the answer that, uh, yes, the loop was vectorized. Um, yay. Um, uh, where are we? So going back to the um, presentation. Oh, uh, yeah. So the, stati the status of this JSON output, it's in trunk and it works mostly. Um, so yeah, there are, there are bugs um, in terms of the one I mentioned earlier about the interaction with the um, tracking of abstract origins. Um, there are some lifetime issues there, and there's possibly a, a issue there, and there are some possibly some memory consumption issues, I suspect. Um, and also, I have entirely punted so far on LTO support, and I, I intend to fix that um, for GCC9. Um, there's not much automated test coverage yet. I'm looking at um, 
I have a half-written patch to um, try and um, get Deja GNU to uh, a directive to look at the, the JSON file that was written out and assert properties about it so that we can write Deja GNU tests for this um, by integrating Python into, yeah. I, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. Um, it, it, it's optional, it's optional. You wouldn't need Python. Um, purely to run, but just to run the tests. The other, the other, I guess the higher level point is I've been playing with this with toy examples. I haven't yet really done the sort of real testing it on, you know, really big. What? I have not yet run it on spec, and that's the real, um, you know, and then see what drops out. And I suspect things, problems will, problems will emerge. So um, it's. It's kind of here as an experimental feature right now. I, maybe I can, I hope to stabilize it. Um, so it's, it's not that, because um, yeah, that, that, I think that third point is really the, um, the, the, uh, the biggest concern. Uh, that's a, yeah, the question is, do I plan to put the H, uh, JSON to HTML script into, into the, say, the conship subdirectory? I don't know. Um, um, yeah, I, I said, we've had this discussion on the mailing list. I have a, it's, it's written in Python, I, and I have a Python module for parsing the JSON dumps and um, um, with a slightly nicer API. I mean, it's trivial to pass JSON and parse JSON in Python. It's, it's built into the standard library, but it's nice to have a, are like a more um, something that checks that you're you know if you're looking at random um, fields of random objects that it's kind of what you expect rather than um, yeah because mm, yeah schema they're fun um, and I don't know if JSON schema support really is a thing um, so that's what's in uh, in terms of the machine readable output um, and it's in chunk another thing I've been looking at that's already in GCC nine is some tweaks to our dumping API. Um, so previously, yeah, the main one, dump printf at a location, um, and it's slightly changed signature, and two different things have changed to it. Uh, I'll talk about those. First one is, uh, I, in I introduced a new type, um, dump location t, uh, rather than just um, source location, aka location t, that's a type def of the same thing. Um, and so um, rather than just record location T, which is the location in the user's source code, um, it, like dump location T has both the dump user location T, which is the location T, but also the profile count. Um, and there's also a dump impl location T, which is, captures that where is this dump message being emitted from in GCC's own source code, or indeed, I guess, from a plugin. Um, and, um, and the nice thing is it, has, uh, it can be implicitly constructed from a Gimple statement pointer or a RTX instance star. Um, so rather than saying um, dump printf message note at Gimple location, this statement, I can't handle that. You could write, you just pass in the statement itself and magic happens. It automatically extracts the source user source location, the profile count, and the emission location it is all kind of done transparently. Um, and yeah, so in fact, that's what I just said. Yeah, so rather than just having file line column blah, we have all that metadata. And that's how that, uh, that's basically sort of underlying foundational work to get the, the JSON output working. Um, and the other, the other thing um, is about GCC 8 and earlier, the dump printf and dump printf location, they were basically just um, f printf um, under, the, under the covers. Um, and therefore, were restricted to whatever printf supports in terms of the, the formatting, format specifiers, or conversion spec, well, format codes, whatever. Um, GCC9, they now use print, uh, Pretty Printer, and a, a custom one which has um, format codes dedicated to middle end types. Um, so there's a percent %e, which is equivalent to dump gimple extra with those um, things, and a percent %g, which is similar but slightly different format for a dump statement, uh, percent %t for dump gimple expression. Um, and, one of the, and one of the things is, Oh, good. Uh, right, yeah, good. Um, and what, one of the things this this does is there's some magic in the pretty printer. So all of this is captured kind of in the JSON format um, with that markup I was talking about earlier. Um, and and so hence, if you've got some existing code, yeah, dump printf lock at vet location is print a string, then print a tree, print an and, dump printf, then print, and you're sort of programmatically building a string. Uh, a dump message this way, you can just do it all in one go with 
people are percent T and percent T that way. Um, and the thing that's motivating that is coming up in a few slides time. Um, but, um, and, is, and the thing that, that's in chunk, but the thing it's, uh, that made me, motivated me to do it isn't actually in chunk yet. But in the meantime, is it worth a mega patch to, oh, there's a thumbs up from Richie, to go and clean them all up? Because, for example, we have, the, this is the, I think the biggest one I found, dump, where you've just got this um, long list of dump calls, um, and that can be turned into splat with percent T's, percent D's, I think that one has. Um, so you would you would favor just going going for it and using it throughout. Okay, I guess I, I just volunteered. Bother. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, so another, another thing I did was there was a, a pattern and that's a lot in the vector it was present throughout the vectorizer. If dump enabled, print, and then this sort of lots of equal signs and then a kind of a name. And this was basically being used to capture sort of nested scopes within the uh, of within the the the, op, the, op, the optimization pass. And so I thought, well, let's just let's just capture that and created a dumpback scope um, macro and it's an auto dump scope which is a slightly more general version of the same thing. Um, and that's capturing, yeah, we're entering this um, kind of area of the optimization. There's a kind of a nesting there. And, and now, because we can capture that in a slightly more kind of richer way, um, the textual format uses indentation to show that this is nested inside that and so on. And you just can sort of see the nesting levels. Um, although that rather relies on the fact that all of the locations are emitted in the same place. Um, which is in itself as sort of a, a problematic, as I said. They, once you start met, you know, fixing that, they, they don't line up properly anymore. Um, but more usefully, the machine readable output has the nesting information kind of recorded directly in, by nesting the, the JSON objects. Um, and so, yeah, so in terms of that's what's currently in trunk. And as of today, I don't know, we have about roughly two months left, assuming, uh, you know, the, with similar sort of in terms of feature development work, the GCC9. Um, so what should we do? How should I best spend those two months? What are good features to get in? And here's a sort of list of ideas I have and all the remaining work. Um, so I, I guess the high level point is, well, what should the user experience be in terms of a, an end user who is trying to, who's poking at GCC and trying to get it to make better code, make, generate better machine code? Um, what what command line options should I be using? Um, or should they use, um, what output do they see? Um, and so again, presumably, I think it's for the vectorizer. It's, well, what loop are you talking about? And what is the statement? What, what is the construct within my source code that is stopping you from vectorizing it? That's sort of what they, I, I imagine the, the user is asking. Um, and um, where are we? Yeah, so we, in terms of the current um, in terms of um, user experience, in terms of what the user can filter on, as I said before, you can say you have these sort of tags where you can identify passes in dash f, dash f opt info and say, that with, I, want to I want to filter on inlining passes. Um, and you can also filter with that based on, it. was it every, every message or was it just successful optimizations versus missed optimizations and then there's notes. And, and that's again that per translation unit granularity. Um, and, um, then, uh, or if you use the dump file and it's a specific pass, tell me everything about this pass, but it's just that. So in terms of what should it be like um, for an end user, um, you can't currently filter on, I just, at least I don't think you can. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I still think of myself as the newbie on the, um, in the uh, GCC. Um, I don't think you can say, maybe with a pragma or an attribute, it would be nice to say, I, tell me a lot about this, particular um, function, or particularly this range of source code within a function. Um, and similarly, is there a way of, or should there be a way of saying, uh, a filtering on a pro, uh, pro, sort of profile count threshold, where I only want to know about, uh, please only turn on dumping for code that's above a certain threshold in the profile. Um, and how should that interact with, say, the machine-readable machine readable output? I know that Clang has, or is it LLB, I'm not quite sure, they have a, um, something like dash F diagnostics remarks threshold, or I don't remember the exact name of the, the option, but it is, it's basically, a, and it takes a numerical value, and it's, and it's a way of 
Uh, I believe they, I, I believe it basically filters their YAML output so that because their YAML output was getting huge um, when they were trying it on real examples, and it was either the YAML was getting huge or the generating the HTML to describe it in, from their report generator was getting enormous. Um, so, and right, I think right now um, the JSON output just currently includes everything. Um, so perhaps the app should be filtered with the same filtering as that. Um, do people like the idea of a pragma or a function attribute? Any? No, you're shaking your head um, for for filtering this, or base or a profile threshold. Uh, any? No, no opinions. Okay, I'll move on. Um, oh, so I think what I was would like is to have kind of a compiler explorer. So you you build everything, then you launch some tool based on whatever, which just loads the JSON data, and then you can explore your source, go to the hottest function, list what did it to the code, what didn't it do to the code, display maybe some visually what it inlined and what it didn't inline and why. So just being able to explore what the compiler did. You, I, I could probably imagine that uh, one could do this just with a JavaScript in the browser, if one could code JavaScript. Yeah. So it's, that could be the UI, very fancy, mm -hmm. or with TK, you know, old style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I find on the LLVM side, the ability to specify the function I'm interested in on the, as a command line option very useful. As a, on the command line. So effectively, uh, you can say that. debug only and uh, constrain your view to being looking at one particular function. Uh -huh. And therefore, you cut down the noise of all the other stuff that gets in the way. Um, so. I was first. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Although it could be the mangled name. I don't know. So um, what? what, what what I fear about not filtering via command line pragmas, attributes, or whatever to be invented means um, is that the that, uh, real life size of the JSON files will be unacceptably large because the dump files right now are already unacceptably large. And you are basically <coughs> exchanging 80 character lines with, with 1K character pieces. And so I think we will eventually will, we will need some mean of filtering. I have no idea what, what is best. Certainly not an attribute, but maybe a pragma. Switch it on here, switch it off there. With the thresholds is also a good idea. Yeah. But, but I have no good idea for that. But, but I think it's somehow required to also make it filterable on the command line. On the other hand, I also like Richard's uh, exploration tool. Yes. So, so I think one obvious thing is to stream out compressed data and not huh? this, this is the very, the very first thing I just feed it through setlib uh, and then if you'd used XML I think there were these XML schemas which would could be applied to XML that would filter things I don't know if there's something like that for JSON so that the user can provide some modify JSON magic thing which would on the fly cut things out is this something that you can do with I JSON? Think I think it, with yeah. XML or some variant of, of that, you can do that. And I think there's a thing called JSON path, I, I guess, yeah. yeah, this is, yeah. Shall, I, uh, shall I move on to, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, maybe the thing to do is to actually use it in anger on spec and deal with the problems that arise. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving on. Um, so in terms of that was looking at filtering. And so the current user experience of for I guess for an end user looking at a loop, if they use say that if you remember those two lines, two pages of notes of which it find it tells you with ver yeah, various arcane details about the insides of GCC about Gimple and find and one of them is this is the statement I couldn't handle. Well what should we say, or at least what I, what would an end user like to see, or my view of that. And I, I think it should be, here's the location of the loop, I can't 
do loop vectorization on this loop. And here is the problematic statement, it's the location, and because of, here's the reason. Um, and I, I, think I, would, I think it would be good, we ought to provide end users with a way of getting at that somehow. Um, and, uh, and one other detail is we use note for everything in the dump. Um, and they're not all message notes. They are missed optimization versus optimization. So maybe we should rather than say note, uh, note reason, missed optimization can virtualize. So that's, a, that may, that's like a little detail that might require some Deja GNU tweaks. And I'm sorry, uh, you, yeah. The real fix for the optimization problem might be something completely unrelated to where the decision was made. Sort of 20 passes ago, you mean? Oh, yeah, and that's a difficult problem, he said, <laughs> uh, not giving a good answer. Um, yeah. Um, but it, uh, if I can, I'll keep moving on. Um, another idea of how we could change, maybe hopefully improve the um, user experience is, so currently we're just dumping, we're printing messages um, it, with our own, here's file line column. Um, there's, a, there's a subsystem within GCC that also handles printing file, file line column message, and it's for printing diagnostics. And it has a whole bunch of smarts for, um, for, for printing more than just that. For example, showing um, the user source code perhaps with a the particular construct underlined, um, and it has the whole in function, so in file included from in file foo included from bar included from baz, and also in function foo in inlined from blah, and there's those. Um, so c could should we put um, use um, the diagnostic subsystem for emitting these these notes um, and potentially adding metadata to it? And I was playing around with this. I have a, so this is half real code, half mock-up um, of, uh, of what the example might look like. And it's a bit more complicated um, because I'm saying in function, uh, where are we? In function f with lots of C++ signature, uh, missed optimization, couldn't vectorize the loop due to this loop in uh, file vector included from demo.cc in function um, std vector size in line from f at cc in systealvector.h. Here's the relevant statement not supported, and here's the actual thing. And it turns out it's this uh, point of subtraction which involves an exact division, which was where that's coming from. Um, is this an improvement? I'm not sure. <laughs> Richie. So uh, I think there is just maybe also a historical remark. So when the opt info stuff was invented, it was to basically make the information that's available in the dump file somehow more easily visible to the user. And at that point of time, we decided to not add additional prints for those, but use the same data. Um, so, but the direction you are going that suggests to separate the information that is purely there for debugging a pass that's got going to the dump file, from those messages that are maybe also interesting to the user. Mm -hmm. But of course, the original argument, well, maybe also the debugging messages are interested, interesting yeah, to right. the user. So it's always a, a hard trade-off to make. Mm -hmm. So it, for the opt-info thing, the only thing that's currently really usable, I think, is the optimized thing yeah. that just says, you, I optimized this, lo this location. Mm -hmm. That's not too noisy, and it's sort of, few mm -hmm. of uh, useful. Yeah, I kind of talk about this on the next slide. Um, if I could move on, which is um, maybe, I, well, I think it would be good to provide a way of saying um, marking, maybe we split messages into two. Some are priority and some are details, um, and as an additional flag, perhaps. Um, and so, and, and basically the priority messages are the, I can't vectorize this loop, and here's the actual most deepest underlying reason why, or at least the first reason why, I suppose. Um, and um, everything else 
is our details. And then the, by default, we only show the priority messages. And then GCC developers and Deja GNU tests pass in a special flag to say, show me all the other stuff. Um, and that, I think, is a, nice user, a nicer user experience in that end users get something, hopefully, that is digestible to them. And we get all the information. Or I don't show if I'm a vectorization maintainer yet. Um, or, I, I, code a contributor yet get all the, the information needed to actually fix the passes when they're, they're going wrong. Um, and in which case, how, if, if, if people like the um, split between priority messages and detail messages, how do we express that in the dump calls? Now, you could actually just add a new flag everywhere explicitly and add message details, message priorities, and that could be a lot of code churn, which I don't really like. The idea I, uh, I liked um, was a more implicit approach, which is we've got this idea of nested scopes. How about saying all that stuff in nested scopes? If once you in all of that, once you start entering those, make everything within them just details, and only the stuff at the very top level are priority. Or just have a this is my C plus plus maybe C plus. I like C plus plus magic, but I know a lot of people don't. Um, have an auto hide dump messages class, and it's lifetime says, OK, all that messages within my lifetime are details. Everything else is priority. Um, and that might express, in terms of the API calls, how we do the, the split between the, these priority messages versus detail messages. And the, the problem with the scoping will be that, that the, the most interesting, that what you said is the most interesting, namely the deepest real reason for something broken will be very much down inside. Uh -huh. the and in scope. my next slide. <laughs> Um, if, uh, forgive me. Um, so I, 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 okay, I was looking at fixing and going through and debugging some of these and fixing. Well, what, what actually is the deepest problem, and and trying to, you know, emit the proper location and figure out and sort of somehow get that information back. And I was sort of manually fixing and I found it very tedious. And so I came up with this approach for sort of bubbling up information from those deep points in the optimization about failures and sort of bubbling it back up to the top of the pass so that I can give a high kind of high level report. Um, and so basically I came up with this opt result class, which is basically a fancy wrapper around bool. And in the common case where dumping is disabled, it's basically just a bool. Um, and um, you return true for success, return false when something can't be handled. Uh, but when dumping is enabled, it, there's also a reason string, which is sort of passed around as if it's part of this object, which looks, it's vaguely analogous to an exception, but it's implemented in a very different way. But in fact, the reason string that's sort of notionally part of it is actually off on this, is, is, uh, is actually stored in a global um, to avoid um, bloating the, um, um, the, the common case where we don't care about the dumping is turned off. Um, so rather than you have a whole bunch of checks, if check this fails, then dump, I can't do that, uh, return false, if check something else, that and return false with a different message, and so on, and return true if all the passes checks succeed. You do if, I can't do that, return op result failure at this statement, you can't do that. And the, this was actually what motivated my dump printf change in that we can do, you can do formatted printing there and only have it f do the formatted printing if the things that, if dumping is turned on. Um, and so, um, Op results is it's basically a fancy way of spelling return true, but it's documenting that this is, it, it's better documenting the code. Um, op result failure at is essentially like return false, but it's capturing, um, yeah, basically when I started converting them from bool, returning bool, functions from returning bools to returning op results, it becomes a compile time error to throw away um, result handling. And so it very nicely falls out of the C++ type system of here's exactly where we need to put um, failure handling and in fact failure at statement. Um, so yeah, it basically captures all that where the failures can happen and um, where the location information for the actual problematic constructs needs to be captured. And yeah, so the specific example that we've been working through that demo.cc, it's coming from, it was coming from this code, uh, like not vectorized, run statement, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you'll see that it's using, like everything else, vec location, returning false. And so in this uh, brave new world, it might be up result failure at. And 
here we're actually passing in the statement. And that then becomes a dump location. It captures, and it, it, in particular, though, it captures the, the source location of the, the problematic construct. Um, and in fact, it's being used twice, once to get the location information and once for the formatting. Um, and that is basically a return false with hopefully some B, um, hopefully we can have minimal overhead for passing in these strings that uh, the formatting only happens if dumping is enabled. Um, so that's something I've been working on. I would like to get this into GCC 9. I think it's a big usability win. Um, and, but there, there's some details to be thrashed out. There's the whole details versus priority messages, how you express that at the API level, how the user, how we express it at the, from the command line argument level. Um, the other, um, another idea that kind of occurred to me with this is users seem to, looking at GCC, pound GCC on Freenode, users seem to have a lot of um, confusion or questions about does such and such a pass get run at dash O2 or why isn't this pass being run? And, um, some, and I'm investigating, I often find myself stepping through, for example, the gate virtual functions because there's a non-trivial interaction between command line options, the, the bodies of these gate, or the passes gate functions, and there's a table of options that are turned on by default at the different levels. Um, and so would it be nice if someone's asked dash f opt info vec mist, you know, tell me about missed vectorization opportunities. If the vec optimization pass is being gated and not being, and thus the pass is not being run at all, well, it'd be nice to tell the user that and tell them especially why and how they could fix that. Um, I'm, that I think would be another nice usability feature. And it sort of occurred to me that if we've got this fancy wrapper around booleans, that maybe the gate virtual functions shouldn't return a bool, they should return maybe an opt result or maybe a gate result t, I don't know, um, that is basically a bool, um, but when you turn dumping on, can return more descriptive information. Um, so that's an idea I had, and I, I haven't even tried writing the code yet. Uh, so, um, uh, but maybe that, we, that might be doable for GCC 9. Another much more out there idea, if we're going from that's you know, maybe pushing things, so this is really pushing things. Um, I posted a patch for what I call rich vectorization hints about a month and a half ago to the main list, and, and there was absolutely no reply whatsoever. Um, and this was a, this is a okay, it, going beyond just dump messages and diagnostics, well, what, what could, uh, what could the, the, the output look like? And they come up with these rich vectorization hints that are a mixture of text, diagrams that can be ASCII art if, dumped, if printed on stood error, but could be emitted in the JSON format in a way that we can make SVG from or whatever, in an, you know, depending on what the presentation of it is. And well, maybe I should just show the example. Um, and so given, so given this, say, this example of a loop that can be vectorized, but the, we could vectorize it better um, if the user tweaked things. Um, yeah, so I make loop vectorize. I was able to vectorize this loop. And the compiler is speaking to you. Um, it looks like you're trying to write a C++ program. Um, well, yeah, I was able to vectorize this. Yeah, so may, maybe the, maybe the um, I like this interaction model where the, but the computer is kind of your, a butler or, you know, um, you know, assisting you to get your job done or the, rather than an angry god that demands sacrifice. Um, and, um, but I was able to vectorize this loop, blah, blah, blah. And, and so here's the loop. And, and in fact, here's an ASCII art diagram just trying to give you a sense of what I, of what I did, some, but uh, some runtime tests and the iteration count n over four, and there's an epilogue and the scale, and you go, ooh, what does that mean? Um, and then they say, well, there was a runtime aliasing check. I couldn't prove that these these specific data reference didn't alias. This read write pair could alias. This read write pair could alias. Um, so I had to add a runtime test, falling back to the scalar loop. Um, suggestion: If you know the blah, then marking them with restrict. Here's a patch to add restrict. To, um, to the, to the, uh, the params. Um, and, and, and they all have these little ID codes so that maybe they're searchable online. Um, and yeah, epilogue required for feeling. I couldn't prove the number of iterations is multiple four, so I had to add the blah, and I put epilogue in quotes because it's, uh, it's compilerese, um, uh, it's, it's our jargon. Is there a way of, of actually for a user to fix that so the, the compiler knows, but do we need value range analysis? I don't know. Um, so I don't know if it, it's, Yeah, that would do it. Yeah, I don't know. How. 
generating a patch for the user to do that, uh, I don't know how, yeah, how to express that. And that is a, so what I posted was a very hack it, hacked up prototype where some of the data is real and some of it was just, yeah, let's pretend um, because it's, it's a prototype. Um, that isn't going to get done for GCC 9, um, and, but maybe it's worth pursuing. Um, and uh, yeah, so the summary. Um, yeah, so I've been talking about the, the what, what optimization dump information was available, what I've done so far, and proposed changes. Um, yeah, I'd like um, uh, I'd like to, as I say, I'd like to be able to implement that by default. Vectorization tells the use tells the end user, I couldn't do this because of that, and then have an option we turn on, and Deja GNU turns on to get at the more detailed stuff. And as I say, that needs a way of marking the API calls, and it needs a new command line flag, probably. Um, and that opt, that idea of opt result, a problem to try and bubble up that in, that good location information um, back up to kind of a top level. Um, I don't know if using the diagnostic subsystem. Yeah, there are more and more question marks on this slide as the ideas become more and more questionable. Like I'd like to do the first two. I think I think those are reasonable. Um, these I'm less certain about. That one is two question marks um, for obvious reasons. Um, so that's yeah, that's my talk. Um, and we have oh dear, five minutes left for further. Well, there have been questions along the way. So, so, so one one reason for using the, the diagnostic subsystem was to get the messages translated, uh, which is if you if you present more and more to the users, they probably. The Chinese people will be confused seeing English messages. Oh, so yeah. that would, at some point, it's probably going to be a requirement. Yeah. Either translate the, the dump thing or go through the diagnostic system. Yeah, uh, we, we were talking, we've kind of gone back and forth on the mailing list about this, that maybe the priority message maybe need their own dump call so that it can be tagged by get text um, and picked up for internationalization well, for localization. Um, I don't know whether that's... Chinese, uh, yeah, how much translations are our translators actually willing to translate? Because even now there are already many messages. And so if we add five times the number right. of messages, they might be so should upset we and give up. that one for now? I don't know. Any other questions or suggestions, thoughts, flames? <laughs> so uh, actually, I, I kind of like the rich vectorization hints, but I also kind of don't like them, which is why I didn't reply to the patch yet. Ah. Um, so there are definitely things like uh, if you write a loop with an unsigned induction variable, we have to assume it wraps, stuff like that, where we can teach users, well, if you know the loop doesn't, if the, the loop counter doesn't wrap, then try to communicate this by using signed variables or a new pragma that doesn't exist yet. I'm not sure if it's going to the details, like for vectorization, if that's really feasible in the long run to do with patches and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It struck me as a massive, Maintenance headache. So, um, yeah. When you suggest patches, um, when you suggest patches to the user, how do you decide the uh, formatting style? Yeah. Um, you, oh, you mean uh, with code layout style? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, from the diagnostic side of things, that we have fix-it hints that are already, you know, suggesting mutations to the user source code, and I kind of punt that and. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of infrastructure from the diagnostic subsystem for generating patches and tracking edits um, based on for doing fixits, and that's kind of falling out of that. And yeah, I, I, um, that, I mean, there's, for example, there's a helper function that tries to for insert a fragment of code here, trying to respect indentation, kind of thing, um, and there's with some heuristics. But um, um, heuristics, uh, looking at the source and detecting yeah. what. Um, yeah, we have a little bit of that already. Um, yeah, the um, fix it hint for inserting. Yeah, that's it. There is a. I don't know when when the next talk is starting. Am I taking up some time? But there's um, 
in the C++ front end, there is a warning about if you have a, um, I think it's a copy constructor or some, oh, things that typically return star this, that things that typically return a reference to itself as the return value. And that we have a, a warning um, saying, did you forget to do the return, if you, if you let it kind of fall off the end, uh, that's it. Yeah, it's the return, missing return value. Um, we can, it's in, inject a fix it here and say, did you mean return star this? And in, in terms of doing that, we already have a bunch of, I added some heuristics for saying, if it's all on one line, it can do that. But if it's a, um, if the functions on multiple lines put the return, in suggested return star this um, to line up with the existing code, um, how far down that path we want to go, I, I don't know. But um, it's, um, I guess it's a little wedge going into the, yeah. It, it, it works. Um, a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, I suspect I need to give up the microphone. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks very much for listening.